Hi, my name is Jamie. I'm with Portola Paints. Today we're going to be doing a lime wash tutorial for you. So we've got our gallon of lime wash. We've got my five inch brush. Uh, the color we're going to be doing today is called Dolphin. And um, I'll give you a few little tips along the way and show you how it goes on and hopefully make this really nice and easy for you at home. So here we go. So we're going to start at the top corner. And the whole thing will be done with a brush. So we're going to cut it in as we go. So when you're doing a lime wash, there's a lot of different techniques that you can do um, as far as the way that you're brushing it on. Ultimately, there's not necessarily a, a right or wrong way to do it. It comes down to preference and uh, you know to really create the sort of look and feel that you're going for um, but you'll see I will sort of put it on in a, a random sort of overlapping motion like this traditionally it's usually done either like this which is called a, a crow's feet or a crosshatch pattern or it can also be done sort of more up and down so there's different ways to do it to create different effects but you'll see we we cut it in, and then we'll move ourselves sort of across and then down and over. So depending on the, the size of the room and the shape of your walls, there's sort of, you know, there's a different approach to painting it depending on, you know, on your specific situation and the layout of your room. So with this one, because the wall is longer, or uh, I'm sorry, taller than it is wide, I'm going to be working myself sort of across and then I'll work myself down and waiting till I get to this corner over here until I actually can take a break. The first coat is really forgiving. You can't really mess it up. Your second coat is where you're going to get most of the, the pattern and that's where you're going to get most of the, you know, the effect that you're going for. You also see the color goes on quite a bit darker than it'll dry. So it's really easy to see what's happening with it and you can kind of see your brush strokes. It'll dry a lot more subtle than it shows here. So I try not to keep my patterns too consistent. You can get it in all the same into the corners, but then you might want to, you know, throw in a little bit of variation so that it doesn't look too consistent throughout the entire wall. So for instance, coming at it sideways, getting a little up and down, just keeping it a little bit random. You also see the way I'm holding the brush like this, as opposed to how you would think maybe to hold it. Something like this, you have a lot more control and it's a lot faster. So when you think about hand brushing an entire room, it sounds super time consuming and really daunting, but it actually, you'll see it goes really quite fast when you're using a big brush. And cutting it in as you go will definitely save some time because you're not cutting it in and then going back and rolling it. So. So when we do line wash, we talk about working corner to corner before you take a break. So at this point, we have a minute to sort of regroup, make sure you have enough material before you start the new wall. So this one, corner to corner, we cut it in as we went. So we cut in the top, cut in the side, worked our way across and down the wall. So we'll see there's already little spots where it's starting to dry and lighten up a little bit. So for this wall, when we have the window here, you know, typically I'll start in the top corner 
work myself over and then down and sort of across. And this is where the, the wet edge is going to be an important part of the process. So um, you'll notice I'll jump up and down. I'll start here, continue this wet edge, then I'll move it down here, then maybe jump this over a little bit. And that's where you kind of, the timing of it and just having a game plan while you're, before you start your, your wall is an important part of it. So. Starting a new wall is always the trickiest thing because it takes the most time when you're cutting in each area. Once you get into an open wall, it gets a lot easier and it gets a lot faster. So you'll see I'll sort of extend this edge, then I'll extend this edge, and then you'll kind of simultaneously jump from one to the next. So one thing I forgot to mention before we started is that the, uh, the primer is very important to the process. So we've already gone through and primed this with our, with our lime proof undercoat sealer. So this is something that gives the lime wash a really good surface to bond with. It also will help ensure that you get the right color and you get the right amount of blooming that you want. So traditionally lime wash could be used on, you know, a number of, of raw surfaces like cement and brick and stucco, things like that. So it wants something with a lot of tooth to really absorb into. So this primer is something that's made specifically for our lime wash to really allow it to bond, um, whether it's on an exterior, interior, any number of surfaces. So we'll hop back up here make sure that this edge stays wet.
All right, so that's it for the first coat. So you can see it's already starting to dry a little bit over here. So probably an hour, two hours at most, we're ready to hit it with the second coat. All right, here we go, ready for our second coat. Let this dry for a couple of hours. You can see it's all relatively even. So here we go. So same approach as the first coat. We're gonna cut in as we go. Start in the top corner. You'll notice you'll go through a little bit more paint on the second coat than you did on the first coat. So you want to make sure that you have at least 50% or more of your material that you're starting with. And again, there's, there's multiple ways to apply this, um, sort of cross-hatched every which way, more up and down. It's something that you can... Uh, you can probably find images online. There's a lot on our website. You can see the different uh, applications, kind of decide what it is that you like. So I'm sort of doing a little bit of a, a hybrid with my technique where I'll go sort of side to side, but a little bit of up and down stuff as well. Ideally, you know, I want this to look just really smooth and natural and not, uh, you know, not too much like suede and not, you know, not too much like anything. It's just going to have a really soft movement to it when it's dry. Another thing to consider when you're doing your lime wash, different colors will bloom differently. And what I mean by that is you'll get highlights naturally from your two coats of lime wash. So that's like the whole you know, effect with lime wash is that you're going to get two-tone you know, effect happening. You're going to get highlights and lowlights. So when you have a darker color, you will see considerably more modeling and highs and lows because the lime that's in the paint is actually white. So when you have a dark color, you're getting more contrast between the lime and the actual pigment of the color. So you're going to see a lot more going on. You can do the same thing in a white or off-white. You're not going to see as much just because there's less contrast between the actual color and the white line that's in the paint. So for this application, we're doing a pretty straightforward approach where we're going two coats straight out of the can, no water, no spray bottle, nothing like that. There's a lot of different ways to do lime paints and one of the most common ones is to use water and spray the wall as you're applying multiple coats, things like that. Um, for this, for, the, for this application, we're going straight out of the can. And you'll notice I am dipping my brush into the can considerably more than I was on the first coat. Um, it's just a different look with this. It's going to be really soft and cloudy. If you use water, you can get it to be a little bit more distressed. Um, also, when you're doing lime wash on an exterior, more often than not, you're going to need to use a little bit of water because of the heat, and it can also soak into 
you know, an exterior surface like stucco or plaster much faster than it's going to on drywall. So um, we'll do more videos coming up in a little bit here where we'll show other techniques and different tricks on how to do, um, how, to, how to achieve, you know, more antique effects and things like that. So again, corner to corner, cut in as you go. Now that we're at this, this break in the wall here, we can actually stop and regroup. Make sure that you have enough material to finish the rest of it before you get going on this. So we'll do a similar thing as we did on the first coat. Start here, bring it over, bring it down, bring it across and kind of meet this thing so that you don't get seams and overlap lines, which is a really common thing that can happen with faux finishes and glazes and things like that. So when you're doing larger walls, you always have to be mindful of what we call the wet edge. So to make sure that you continue to extend these bits a little bit over at a time. And even if you have to jump up, and even if you just do, you know, one extra tiny little bit, now all of a sudden, you know, you're buying yourself more time on this edge until you get back around to it. And that's what will happen if that starts to dry halfway through your wall. Then you'll start to get seams and things like that, which you want to avoid. So if you can, if the wall is, is too large to physically do it by yourself, that's where you need to start using, um, you know, more than one person and, you know, uh, mapping out your approach so that you can work together and keep that wet edge moving across the wall. This is also a thing where using a spray bottle with water can be really helpful. You can take a, a water bottle and literally mist the wall to help keep it wet.
That's it. So second coat's done. Let this dry for a couple more hours. See what it what we think. Um, we can put a sealer on top of it, or we can just leave it raw the way it is. Um, I think it's going to be great. Thanks for watching.